Well, hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'm going to be running a front logo and a side logo at the same time to save both time and money. You want to check it out? Let's go. Well, hey, this is what I'm talking about. Front logo, side logo. Hooping it one time and setting up the machine to run the front, how to do that, and then how to have it come over here and do the side logo. Uh, Co-op opportunity with builders and other companies, it's great to kind of split the cost of the hat so um, the company will be on the front and then the other company on the side. And uh, that's a great way to advertise and run two businesses at once. So that's what we're doing today. And I was like, this might be a really cool one to share. So uh, let's do this. I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, first things first, if you've never set up your hat driver on your machine yet, let's get that thing dialed in so that it's gonna run perfectly and not damage the machine. Let me tell you from experience, I did this. And if you look here, I had the driver set too low and it was rubbing on the sewing arm and it caused some premature wear and uh, I caught it a little bit later and it didn't do too bad maybe it gets closer I don't know but it uh, you're not supposed to do this so I will show you how to set that up to avoid that happening to you first thing you're gonna do is in your maintenance kit grab your four millimeter torque pitch driver and then you're gonna find this really cool little tool it's got multi uses but we're gonna use it for a shim today to set the gap um, and uh, keep that thing from rubbing. That's gonna be our distance or shim. In the automotive, they call that a feeler gauge. All right, first things first, if you don't already have your hat driver assembly on the uh, bottom of the sewing arm, go ahead and slide that on by loosening these, and you'll have to remove this part right here. Um, mine's kinda loose, so I taped it on. It keeps getting in the way, but you'll just slide this out of the way, kinda like that. Um, and then, this is, man, I'm just dropsy today. And then, uh, so just loosen these a little bit. Hmm. Not that loose, it's gotta be barely loose. And this will slide all the way back, just like that. So let's get that on there first. And I recommend, and I'm gonna say this a, a couple of times because whatever machine you set this up on and that hat driver, uh, label it and make sure it stays on that machine um, because the other one may be a little bit different well different clearances so you don't want to be mixing them up all right don't reef this down when you use your allen key to tighten this thing hold it close to this part don't hold the end here and then reef it. It does not need it. With tapered edges, um, it doesn't need to be that tight. Just like this. It ain't going nowhere. All right, now, once you got your hat driver attached and on the machine, we're gonna pull out that torque bit screw thing here and uh, loosen these. There's two down here. One, two, and then three and four are up here, right there. So just loosen those a little bit. Once they're loose, the back driver, or the main bracket back there has tapered holes and can slide up and down. And this is where we'll take the shim slide between the sewing arm and the hat driver here and set it up. See how loose it is? Right. If you have set your design file up to <clears throat> and tell it the center hoop so it'll go back. I just got some random design over here right now that I'm working on but you can also go over to your machine and do the rectangle hoop plus center, and that will center the hoop for you. <clears throat> and then uh, 
which is kind of nice because then it slides it back so you can see it a little bit better where it would probably rub if you didn't do this. So now I got you know a little bit of space for my shim. It's not rubbing. We can kind of do some back and forth movements. Make sure it's got room as it rotates. It's all nice and tight. Center it again. And uh, now we're start ready to start doing some work. Okay, so now what we want to do is using the center of the hat and the width of the logo, we need to get a measurement from the center to where we want the logo on the side to go. <clears throat> so in this case, um, uh, there's probably a fabric ruler that's a little better than this, but we're about four inches right there. So I'm gonna say there's five, five and a half. So we'll go about five and a half to about the center panel right here where this one's at. All right, so once we're in the software, we have our center line, which is red. I have my hoop selected, which I can turn on and off here. Um, to adjust that, we go in and select this hoop. Uh, this one right here, the wide angle cap frame. Hit okay. And so these grids are set at one inch. So five and a half to the center of that was right there. And I lined it somewhat close to the bottom of this uh, over on this side. So it's set up, here's the center of the hat, here's that five and a half inches. So let's go ahead and send it over to that machine. Let's set the appropriate colors. Okay, so on a hat, this will be upside down. The bill is right here at the top. So let's go ahead and hit flip it twice right there. All right, so let's see. Now we can center the hoop and I'll laser align it on the machine. I guess before we can set up the machine, we're gonna have to hoop it first. So here's how to hoop it so that we can do that side. So cut yourself a big enough piece and then we got the bottom of the hoop here. We need to make sure we got backing for the side and backing for the front. And we just throw this on here. And that's what's nice about these classic ones is that you can go a lot more uh, locations than just the front. However, I don't think they hold as good. Sometimes I was just like, forget it. I want it to just run uh, on the front only and then I'll use a fast clamp pro or something for the side but in this case this one works out really good because it's not a significant amount and it's on the mesh so what I like to do here is make sure that the, the strap is level with the mesh and the bottom edge of the hat there as I come around and tighten up my hoop then you got your fancy clips here let's hook this to the bottom one down here like this Now we can take it over. All right, the key in getting the placement wise is in the digitizing where we have it um, set up for the measurements on this hat. Different hat will probably have a different measurement. Just double check it, make sure there's that if the logo needs to go over farther, it can. And right here, we'll take our laser and see if it's in the center. And it needs to come Nope, other direction. This way. So to trace it, hoop plus this one right here. It'll kind of give you an idea where it's going to go. And then the side logo. Also, here's kind of a cool tip when it comes to uh, making sure that your hat's perfectly centered. Um, there's a little bit of a, a puff between the hat and the sewing arm here. So it's kind of not all the way down. The pressure foot will push it down, especially once it starts to get going on this, this design. But one thing you'll notice is if you do the laser, it looks like it's right in the right spot. But if I push down on that, it's not centered anymore. The laser is kind of over here in this corner and uh, it's not, it's lined up with the hole. So you want to make sure that you move that a little bit to the side. Even the thickness of the hat and the product you're stitching, kind of want to go to the right side of it 
to kind of guarantee that it's in the center. All right, let's give it a shot. Well, that's all I got for you today. And I got a whole lot of these to get done. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for all the kind comments and uh, you know the community we're building here. And remember, you two were designed to do great things. Whatever you do, give it your best and do it because you love it. Hopefully you helped somebody out there today. Thanks.